Hey Morningstar, while it's spring break for many of our students and kiddos, it's Holy Week for all of us. A reminder that holy means to be set apart, it's sacred, it's not to be seen or used uh, in common ways or ordinary ways. So my prayer for myself as well as all of us is that this wouldn't be just another ordinary week. Instead, that it could be a week in which we set aside some intentional time to reflect on our relationship with God and how that's been changed because of God's love and Jesus' undying commitment to save us from our sins. In the church, it's easy for us to hop right over the cross and Jesus' sacrifice. We can do that in how we attend worship, coming to wave our palm branches and cheer for Jesus as our King on Palm Sunday, then come back a week later and celebrate the joy and hope we have through His resurrection. And while both those events merit our respect and attention, they would absolutely lose their, their significance without Jesus' crucifixion on the cross. Because without the crucifixion, there would be no empty tomb. Without Jesus' sacrifice, there would be no resurrection. Without his death, there would be no eternal life. Without Good Friday, there is no Easter. So my challenge to all of us this week is to just take some time, specifically reflecting just on the cross, and, and not just Jesus dying for the sins of the world, but making it, it personal, stopping and considering our own sins, the ones that we've committed in, in the past, that one signature sin that the evil one uses to constantly tempt us individually. Remember that Jesus had to die in order to offer us forgiveness because we, unless we understand the great lengths that he went to in order to offer us forgiveness in life, you and I tend to cheapen God's grace. We can cheapen it by thinking we're entitled to being forgiven or that we've somehow earned it by, by doing good deeds or attending worship or giving a certain amount of money. Friends, God doesn't owe us anything. And he certainly isn't under any obligation to extend us mercy and grace when we've betrayed his commandments. But because of how great his love for us is, his 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 relationship with us as our Heavenly Father. He's willing to do whatever it takes for us, His children, so we can have freedom from our sins. We can have life abundant and eternal. To give you a special opportunity to reflect on your sin and Jesus' undying love for you, we have two services this Good Friday at 5.30 p.m. and 7 o'clock in the evening. And if you're in town, I urge you to attend one of these services, not just hop from celebrating Palm Sunday to, to celebrating Easter, because you're going to miss out then on the, on the central event of the Christian faith, the one thing God did to save and deliver us from sin and death. And hey, if, if you're not in town, I encourage you, go find a church wherever you happen to be. Attend a service there. Maybe you can just find a church that's open, and you can just go into their sanctuary and sit and, and spend some time with Jesus. And you know what? If, if all the doors are locked, you don't need a church. You can just spend some time wherever you are stopping and considering the, the length that Jesus Christ went to, his sacrifice for you, and that he's calling you to follow him, to hop, follow him, to be a disciple, to take up your cross daily, to die to yourself so that you'll be raised to a new life that comes only through Christ. Hey, I can't wait to be with you for all of our Good Friday services and Easter services. So just remember the opportunity we have to witness to God's love, to invite people to, to come to church. They're going to be so open to attend this week more, more than any other week, maybe Christmas and Easter. I mean, the two biggest ones out there. So extend an invitation. Bring somebody with you. Be the church. And I'll see you in worship this weekend. God bless you.